Hello everyone. My name is Shomo Pal. I am currently a postdoctoral researcher at Google Research. Today I'm going to speak about support recovery in universal one-bit compressed sensing. This is a joint work with my PhD advisor, Arya Masundar. In the present world, data is ubiquitous and the amount of big data is increasing exponentially. It is a significant challenge to store this data efficiently and reconstruct it. Since most data sets such as raw images or raw audio signals have a large size, it is difficult to design efficient algorithms without any structural assumptions. Luckily for us in practice, most signals are sparse in some domain. That is we can use some kind of basis transform such as a wavelet transform or a Fourier transform to represent the signal as a sparse vector where most of the entries are zero. So let's look at an example. It turns out that although most images look random and are hard to compress, most signals that we care about, such as these images below, are highly structured. And they're, they are sparse after using the basis transform, such as the wavelet transform or the Fourier transform. And henceforth, we will assume that this change of basis has been pre-applied to make the data sparse. So let's be a bit more mathematically rigorous. Suppose we have a signal vector, which is n-dimensional, and we will denote it by the x. And we will assume that each signal is sparse. That is, it has at most k non-zero elements. That is, again, the L0 norm of X is at most K. And we will call the set of non-zero indices of the vector X as the support. And we will denote the support by sub of X. And it turns out that such sparse high dimensional signals can be compressed and reconstructed by using quantized linear measurements, where the number of measurements is much smaller than the size of the latent dimensions, dimension space, which is N. In this paper, we look at an extreme quantization setting known as the one bit compressed sensing. Here, we will use signs of the linear measurements to compress and reconstruct a sparse vector. So we will begin by introducing the sign function, which takes as input a real number x and returns one if x is positive and returns zero if x is zero and minus one if x is less than zero. So we will extend this notation. So sign of a vector will be the sign of each entry of the vector. Okay. So now the one bit compression strategy works in the following way, we take linear measurements of the signal vector and only store its sign. And our goal is to reconstruct the signal from the stored sign vector. Okay, So in the reconstruction step, we have a measurement matrix A, which has M rows where M is much smaller than the dimension N, an unknown signal vector X, which is known to be K sparse, and we have an observed vector y, which is sine of ax. And therefore, the entries of y only contains the elements 1, minus 1, 0, and so on. And our goal is to reconstruct the unknown signal vector x. This problem has applications in many domains, such as photography, holography, and facial color recognition. And an important property that we care about in this problem is universality. The measurement matrix that we design must work for all n-dimensional signal vectors that are sparse. And this is especially important in applications such as photography, where we must have a single compressing algorithm or strategy that is incorporated into the software of a camera so that we can only use one algorithm for compressing whatever image that is taken by the camera. 
and mathematically our objective in this setting can be twofold first of all we can go after signal reconstruction where our goal is to reconstruct the unknown signal x note that we cannot rec recover the magnitude of the unknown signal vector x since we are preserving only the signs of the linear measurements and the other goal in this setting is to recover the support of the unknown signal vector x and in this paper we'll look at support recovery in the one bit compressed sensing setting so there are three notions of support recovery with minimum number of measurements that we care about in this paper the first one is universal exact support recovery where we want to recover the support of x exactly from sine of ax or the observed sine vector and the designed measurement matrix must be universal that it should work for all n dimensional vectors with sparsity at most k the second notion of support recovery that we care about is universal epsilon approximate support recovery where we do not want to recover the support exactly and it is fine if we recover a set s from the observed sine vector sine of ax such that the size of s is at most k but we can allow at most epsilon k false negatives that is s can contain um at that is epsilon sorry uh, s can contain at most epsilon k false negatives and at most epsilon k false positives that is s can contain at most epsilon k indices which do not actually belong to the support of x and there can be epsilon k indices which belongs to the support of x but is not there in s so mathematically we want to return s as the size of s is at most k and the size of s set minus support of x is at most epsilon k and the size of s intersection support of x is at least max of 0 and the l0 norm of x minus epsilon k and the final notion of support recovery is the superset recovery where our goal is to recover a set s from the observed sine vector y or sine of ax but now we only allow epsilon k false negatives we do not false positives we do not allow false negatives that is the support of x must be a subset of the set s that we return and the size of the set s that we return can be at most the l0 norm of x plus epsilon k so let us briefly discuss our results for this problem so first of all for exact support recovery acharya et al showed that o of k square log n measurements are sufficient for a universal scheme for support recovery and they also proved a lower bound which showing that the result is nearly tight and if it is additionally known that the unknown signal vector x is binary then it turns out that o of k to the power 3 over 2 log n over k measurements are sufficient to reconstruct the binary vector this was also shown in acharya et al so first of all for exact support recovery in our paper we show that o of k square log n over k measurements are sufficient if it is additionally known that the dynamic range of the unknown signal vector can be bounded from above the dynamic range of the signal vector is the ratio of the maximum and the minimum magnitude of the entries of the unknown signal vector so if it if an upper bound on this dynamic range is known beforehand then we can gain some slight improvement in the number of measurements from the general case for epsilon approximate support recovery we can show that o of k over epsilon log n over k measurements are sufficient for a universal scheme for approximate support recovery and we can also show a nearly matching in lower bound proving that our measurement complexity for approximate support recovery is nearly tight again if we no uh, upper bound on the dynamic range of the unknown signal vector then we can gain some improvement 
And if the unknown signal vector X is known to be binary, then it turns out that O of K over square root of epsilon log N measurements are sufficient to reconstruct the binary, reconstruct the, an approximate support of the binary vector X. Next for superset recovery, we show a sufficient measurement complexity of O over K to the power three over two divided by square root of epsilon log N over K. Now note that there is a gap of square root of k factor between the sufficient measurement complexity and the necessary measurement complexity in this, in this problem. And it is an open question on how to close this gap between the upper bound and the lower bound. It turns out that if we know an upper bound on the dynamic range of the unknown signal vector, then this gap can be closed. And again, if the unknown signal vector is known to be binary, then this gap can again be closed but this gap is still exists for the general problem. Okay. So if you're aware of group testing, then we can immediately find many parallels between group testing and one bit compressed sensing. So in group testing, we have an unknown signal vector her, whose entries can only be zero or one. And again, we have a measurement matrix whose entries are zero and one. But this time the operation between the measurement matrix and the unknown signal vector is a logical odd operation. So for each measurement of the unknown signal vector, we observe a one. If the support of the measurement vector contains any a one in the signal vector, and we observe a zero if the support of the measurement and vector contains, does not contain any one from the unknown signal vector. So for this group testing problem, again, k square log n measurements are sufficient for exact support recovery. But for superset recovery, it turns out that k log n measurements are sufficient. However, it is difficult to replicate this result for one bit compressed sensing setting, despite the parallels between the two problems. And the main reason for this is that an observation of zero in the group testing setting means that all the indices of the signal in the support of the measurement vector is zero. However, this is not true for one bit compressed sensing where an observation of zero simply means that the measurement vector and the unknown signal vector is orthogonal. One option is to have key additional measurements so that we can form a linearly independent and matrix is to truly understand whether there, uh, whether there exists any one in the unknown signal vector in the support of the measurement and vector, but this will create an additional multiplicative K factor, which is undesirable. So now let us move on to our techniques. So first of all, we introduce an interesting combinatorial structure that we call a list union free family or matrix. And in this, this matrix has a very nice property. If we take any two sets of columns, S and T of small enough sizes, then there exists some column in the set S such that the support of the column, support of this blue column has small intersection with the support of all the yellow columns combined in S and T. Okay. So we will use this property crucially. So now suppose we have an unknown signal vector X1, X2 up to Xn, which is sparse and has at most K non-zero entries. Now we, what we can do is for every index J, Oh, so first of all, we use the measurement matrix to be the list union free family or list union free matrix. Now for reconstruction, for every index J, we look at the intersection of the Jth column of the measurement matrix, support of the Jth column of the measurement matrix and the support of the output. And we infer that if this intersection is large, then the index J lies in the support and if the intersection is small, then the index J does not lie in the support. And we can prove that if we take 
a small group of indices that all lie in the support of the signal vector x and one of them have must satisfy this property that is we can correctly identify one of them is lying in the support on the other hand if we take a small group of indices that does not lie in the support of x then we can correctly identify one of them and this means that we can the we can suffer at most epsilon k only a small number of false positives and a small number of false negatives now let us move on to superset recovery here we use another matrix which is which we call a least distant matrix and is very popular in the group testing in literature here again if we take two subsets of columns uh, of small enough sizes s and t then there exists a blue column in s such that its support is not contained within the support of the yellow columns of t okay so it means that there exists a row in this matrix where there exists a non zero entry in this blue column but zero entries in all the columns of t so recall that approximate support recovery returns the support with a few false positives and a few false negatives and for superset recovery we need to correct the false negatives okay we do not want any false negatives such as support of the unknown signal vector must lie within the his subset that we return note that for each we can use the least distant matrix for superset recovery in the group testing literature and therefore if we want to replicate the result in one bit compression sensing now we only need to create s rows that are linearly independent here s which is the number of false negatives is much smaller than k and this is possible if we ignore the if we ignore the set of support that is returned by using the approximate support recovery module now if we correctly balance the number of false negatives that is returned by the approximate support recovery module and the size of the least distant matrix then we obtain the desired guarantee now this step of creating s rows that are linearly independent that works for all sets of subsets of indices of size k size s actually is a bit tricky what we can do is to replace the ones by powers of x so that the inner product will create a polynomial whose coefficients are false are the false negatives of the unknown signal vector and since there at most s false negatives such a polynomial will have at most s roots because the number of coefficients is at most s now if additional side information is known for example if an upper bound on the dynamic range is is known or if the number of indices of same sign is known then we can do much better and as we showed we can close the gap between the upper bound and the lower bound on the measurement complexity thank you and please feel free to ask me any questions on this problem i'm looking forward to meeting you at the conference all the virtually